Underwater kamikaze drones belonging to Ukraine attacked Russian ships on the coast of Crimean Peninsula on morning of October 23. For boat-type drones moving in the direction of the peninsula were intercepted and targeted by naval aviation helicopters of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. The Ka-29 helicopter hit the drones with air-to-air R-73 missiles and a machine gun. As a result, drones were damaged and disabled. Retired American generals Philip Breedlove and Ben Hodges have claimed that a tiny German force in Lithuania could defend the country against a large-scale Russian invasion, citing opaque war games conducted in Washington. Breedlove and Hodges recently took part in a computer simulation commissioned by Strong Together, a Lithuanian think tank, and run by the Washington-based Center for the Study of New Generation Warfare. Speaking to German tabloid Bild, they said that the simulation pitted 4,800 German soldiers and 44 Leopard tanks against a Russian force of nearly 30,000 attacking Lithuania through Latvia and from Belarus. There are currently 800 German soldiers stationed in Lithuania, a number set to swell to 4,800 by 2027. In the simulation, the Lithuanian military was used to hold back the Russian advance for four days before the 44 German tanks somehow outflanked and defeated the Russian contingent invading from Latvia in a brilliant maneuver. By the 10th day, Breedlove and Hodges claimed the Germans and Lithuanians would have lost 17 tanks, 145 armored vehicles and 3,650 troops. Russia would somehow have lost 411 tanks, 1,019 armored vehicles and 11,420 men in the same time frame the former American generals profess without explaining further. A separate assessment of the war game published by Lithuania's LRT News news site claimed that a Russian advance could be halted short of Vilnius in time for NATO reinforcements to arrive, but only if the country invested $10.8 billion in its military over the next four years, almost doubling its current defense spending. Such a favorable outcome would also depend on Lithuania being given attack helicopters and long-range missiles to strike targets inside Russia, Gitaras Azubalis, a retired colonel of the Lithuanian Armed Forces, told LRT. Azubalis told Bild that while he believes the 4,008 100 Germans could defeat the Russian division coming from Latvia, Lithuania would nevertheless be left devastated and partially occupied within two weeks of fighting. Hodges and Breedlove have a history of outlandish predictions. Hodges once claimed that Western weapons would enable Ukraine to seize Crimea by last year and declared in March 2022 that Russia was 10 days away from running out of missiles and artillery shells. Breedlove claimed earlier this year that Ukraine can seize Crimea if given enough Western weapons, an assessment not shared by the Pentagon. For enterprises in Russia were attacked by drones of Ukraine. These are Lushkovsky and Yefremovsky distilleries in the Tula region, Biochem plant, complex processing of sugar containing raw materials into different types of alcohol, Russian distilleries produce, in particular, explosives and fuel for military needs. Russian authorities have reported that UAV struck premises belonging to the Russian company Biochem in Russia's Tombov Oblast and an industrial facility in Voronezh Oblast on the night of 21-22 October, and an airport in the city of Nizhny Novgorod, Nizhny Novgorod Oblast, has been closed. An explosion occurred at the premises of JSC Biochem in the town of Raskazovo, presumably after a drone strike. It caused a fire to break out, Maxim Yegorov, the governor of Tombov Oblast said. Yegorov stressed that there were no casualties, the fire was extinguished in an hour, and all the necessary services were on duty. Gyuzov also claimed that there had been a drone attack on Voronezh Oblast. 
Air defense and electronic warfare assets and personnel on duty detected and suppressed a UAV in one of the districts of Voronezh Oblast. It fell on the building of a machine hall of an industrial facility, Alexander Guzov, the governor of Voronezh Oblast said. Guzov also stated that there were no casualties, but there was a small fire on one floor of the building. As of 7 o'clock, fire crews are working at the scene. Guzov added that the risk of a drone attack in the region remains. TASS, citing the Federal Air Transport Agency of Russia, reported that the Nizhny Novgorod airport had been temporarily closed, presumably due to the threat of a Ukrainian drone attack. A little earlier, Russian telegram channels reported that the airport had introduced the Kovir plan, meaning that it was closed and planes were being diverted to other airports. Biokim's website shows that the company produces various types of alcohol, fusel oil, liquid carbon dioxide and Barda molasses organic fertilizer. In one of the most violent areas of the front, which is Pokrovsk, the aggressors from the Russian Federation not only did not reach the maximum of their capabilities, but also began to reduce them due to understaffing. As Ukrainian military expert Ole Zdanov explained to Channel 24, the enemy is now balancing on the edge of its capabilities. In addition, according to the expert, one of the challenges for the enemy is the geographical features of the area. The enemy invaded the heights, starting with Vodzvizenka, then advanced to the river, and there are also heights behind it. This is precisely what complicates the situation for the aggressors. The fact is they stopped during the assault on these heights and are slowing down in this direction today. As Zdanov explains, Russian troops have adopted the principle of attacking along a wide front line and, if they manage to push through the defense of the Ukrainian armed forces somewhere, then their reserves are immediately introduced there. That is, fresh units that were in the second echelon, which can enter the battle with full combat potential. However, according to Zdanov, the positive point is that the Russian command does not have such reserves now. Even in the zone of action of the center group of forces, there is only personnel that can replenish losses. In the Pokrovsk direction, they cannot increase reserves. There is no one to strengthen the front, and the troops that remain are not enough to develop success, Zdanov noted. The last chance for the enemy, as the military man is convinced, is to concentrate efforts on a certain small area, create a group there, and increase efforts by countering Ukrainian troops. At the same time, gradually introduce the second echelon, the operational reserve, into the battle. However, there is a risk for the Russian command, because in those areas where the Russians stop and go on the defensive, the Ukrainian armed forces may counterattack. This may bring a certain success to the Ukrainian troops. Therefore, the situation for Russian soldiers here is stalemate, Zdanov believes. The retired colonel suggests that the Russian general staff understands this risk, which is why they are pressing on a broad line in the hope of identifying the Ukrainian armed forces' weak point with what they have. However, this is unlikely to end in success because the Ukrainians know how to act in such a situation and have the strength and means to fight off a Russian invasion.